Today I thought we'd talk about a simple toy problem that is mostly useless, but you might want to know about it and at least how to solve it. Welcome back everybody. So at the time of filming, we just hit 93,000 subscribers, which is super unbelievable. It's really exciting. Thank you for being here. Thank you for all the support, especially those who support the channel on Patreon, where you can get source code access and access to my monthly office hour. You can see that 100K subscriber mark coming up on the horizon, and I'm just really excited to get there. So like I mentioned, today we're talking about a toy problem. And in case you're not familiar with that term, a toy problem is just basically a problem usually used for educational purposes that doesn't necessarily have a lot of usefulness, except that maybe it might teach us something. The one we're looking at today is based on a game, it has a silly name, and it might be used to determine whether or not someone hires you. Of course, the one we're talking about is FizzBuzz. Some of you have heard of it, some of you have not. I, for some reason, hadn't heard about it till I was in graduate school, but it seems to have taken on a little bit of a life of its own, and I thought we'd talk about it today, and of course, we're gonna look at how to solve it in a couple different ways. This video will have source code. You can get that source code on Patreon if you're interested. So now back to FizzBuzz. What is it? Because computer science and programming are full of toy problems, whether you're generating simple shapes in the terminal or making a simple guessing game or trying to generate the first n entries of the Fibonacci sequence, we use toy problems to teach you to program because they're simple. They don't require a ton of code, but they do involve different techniques that we may want you to understand as well as logical constructs, basically helping you learn to think in the way that you need to learn to think to be an effective programmer. So what's special about FizzBuzz? Well, not much. It's based on a simple game where you take turns counting. So one, two, when it's your turn, if the next Next number is divisible by three, you say fizz. If it's divisible by five, you say buzz. If it's divisible by both, as with 15, for example, you say fizz buzz, and otherwise you just say the number. Pretty simple. So a round of the game might look like this, and the programming version just produces this output, printing out either the number or fizz or buzz or fizz buzz. And usually when we're programming it, we're gonna go up to some number of rounds, 100 is common, or you could pass it in as an argument. That's what we'll do today. So that's pretty simple and not particularly noteworthy, but back in 2007, and Imran Ghori, in a blog post, suggested that FizzBuzz be used as a simple litmus test, basically to determine whether or not someone knows how to code. Now, I've heard a lot of different opinions on this. I'd love to hear down in the comments if you think this is a reasonable thing to do. It's definitely not a perfect measure, but it's amazing how many times since then I've actually heard people talk about doing this as sort of a basic metric to be used in coding interviews to determine if the person that you're talking to actually has a clue when it comes to programming. I've also heard instructors say that they use it just as a quick litmus test as well to see if people were paying attention in the previous class. And while you know from my prior videos that I do have some misgivings when it comes to coding interviews, I'm not a huge fan of them, I have seen this one show up enough and it's simple enough that I thought, hey, we should just take a look at it and make sure everyone's familiar with it. So today we'll see how it works. So let's jump into some code. Now, naturally, some of you are going to have a rather visceral reaction to the thought of using a toy problem to evaluate an elite coding machine like yourself. I get it. But let's see what we can learn from this problem and just maybe get an idea for why people do think it's a useful tool. So I'm going to start out just with an empty program like this this really quick, nothing nothing fancy here. Uh, I do have a make file, really simple, that's just gonna compile my program. Again, if you haven't seen make, check out my previous make videos, but pretty straightforward stuff. Now let's start off just really quick by coming down here and let's just, let's just grab, we're gonna grab our number of rounds as an argument, as a command line argument. And so we'll say, let's say argc is not equal to two. And then, so yeah, so let's just do a quick usage check. Just make sure that, they, that they're that they using it in a way that we think is reasonable. And we'll say usage, send s, this will be the name of the program. And then number of rounds as the one argument we pass in. And then we will uh, print out argv0. So that's the name of the binary, the name of the program that, that they ran. And then return exit failure. Okay, so this is just what's gonna happen if they're not running it in a reasonable way. And then down here, we will just grab n, we'll just call our number of rounds n. We could do something more verbose, but this will be fine for today. And we will do argv1. Okay, now I could do everything in main, and if I were in a coding interview, I probably would, but I think we're going to look at a few different solutions, and it might be nice to be able to keep all of our versions around in the same program. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put each one in a separate function. So the first one, we'll just start with fizzbuzz1 and we'll pass in n. Okay, so this, this fizzbuzz function, this is where the actual fizzbuzz stuff is actually gonna happen. So let's come up here and we will just declare ourselves a function 
Let's not return anything, so it's void, and we'll call it fizzbuzz1, and we'll take a single const int argument. This is gonna be the number of rounds. Now keep in mind there are a lot of different ways you could implement this. That's actually one of the reasons, one of the arguments for using it as a measurement tool is that there is a fair amount of variability. So maybe you can tell stuff about a person's approach to programming by how they approach it. I wanna to start today with one that, that I might expect from a beginning programmer. So typically if I ask you know, first year students, somebody that's just brand new, what I would expect is some kind of for loop. Let's go from i equals zero. We're gonna go to n and then i plus plus. Okay, so we've got this for loop. This is for the number of rounds we're doing. And then what we're gonna do is just follow the logic as it was described in the problem. So I might say something like if i is divisible by three. If you're not familiar with the modulus operator, check out my video on that. But basically I'm just using the modulus operator to determine if i is divisible by three. That means that there will be a remainder zero if I divide by three. So if that's the case, then I'm going to simply print f fizz, fizz, not fix. And then let's do the same thing for five. So if we're divisible by five, then we're gonna print out buzz. And maybe we'll change this to an else if, because then we need to come down here and say, you know, if it's neither, then we're gonna print out the number and just print out i. And then after all is said and done, we'll just print out a new line character. I could have put the new lines into here, but but I'm not going to. You'll, you'll see why in just a second. Now this covers most of our cases. If we if we actually tried this, then you'd notice that there's one thing it doesn't handle, and it, that is it doesn't really handle the case where we are divisible by both. So this example almost works. To make it actually work, we would have to come in here and put another check in here. If I mod five, equals zero. So if it's divisible by both three and five, then we're going to print f buzz. So this is gonna catch the case where you are divisible by 15 or three and five. Okay, so that should work. It's not my prettiest programming, but let's try it out. Just really quick, we will say make, and then let's run example, uh, number of rounds, and let's say we're doing 20. Okay, so you can see, oh, I started with zero. So uh, because zero is, okay, never mind. Uh, what I wanna do is start at one instead because we don't start at zero. Now, if we compile, we try this again. Now we're gonna get something more like we want. Okay, yeah, so one, two, fizz, four, buzz, fizz. Okay, yeah, so this is all working just fine. Uh, you can see we get fizz buzz on 15. This is the reason that I didn't put the new line characters inside the if statements is because I wanted to be able to take fizz here and stick buzz after it and know that I'm gonna be on the same line. So yeah, so this is great. Looks like we got it working on the first try. Now, one thing you notice here, and I think this is the actual strength of the exercise is that this and case right here, this this just gives us a little bit of a wrinkle. Like it, it just complicates things just a little bit and it makes the logic just a bit. I mean, it's not super hard, but it takes the complexity up a significant step for the beginner. Okay, so without that case, the code would be super trivial. You basically just take the description, put a couple of if statements, and you would expect all of your solutions to look very similar, I think. But with this fizzbuzz case, the case where we are divisible by 15, you know, the both case, that complicates things a little bit. And it, and it means that we're gonna get some interesting variation. Okay, so let's look at another way that we could approach this. Okay, so let's come down here and we'll just, I'm just gonna copy this as a starting point and we're gonna call this fizzbuzz2 and we'll change to fizzbuzz2 since that's what we're actually working on now. So if we're trying to improve on this, one thing you might not like is that we have duplicates here and here. Basically this logic happens twice and that's something that I just might not like. A lot of programmers, including myself, don't like repeating myself so let's look at some ways we could remove that. One way that you could remove that is we could take this and up here we could make a Boolean and we'll call it printed, okay? And we'll start it out as false. So this means that like we haven't printed out any messages. Maybe there's a better name for this, but basically then what I can do is come down here and say printed equals true. I'm just gonna remove this right here and I'm gonna remove the else. Down here I'm gonna say printed equals true. And then down here, we're just gonna say if, 
not printed. Oops, and I'm in the habit of typing printf, so I type that instead of printed. Okay, so this approach is going to accomplish the same thing. Basically, now we've just, we've split these up a little bit. So first it will come down and it'll say, okay, if we're divisible by three, print fizz. If we're divisible by five, just alone, or both, then it's gonna print buzz. But so if we've already printed fizz, we're just gonna get a buzz at the end, that's fine. And then down at the end, we'll print out this number if we haven't printed anything. So that makes things, maybe the logic's a little simpler. The added variable does add state, which may or may not be a good thing, may or may not be a, you know, an improvement, depending on your opinion, how your brain processes code, but it's another option. So that's one. Come down here and just make sure it works. Yeah, so that looks fine. Okay, so let's look at another quick tweak. I'm just gonna again copy this and we'll call this fizzbuzz3. Okay, so another way that we could uh, get around some of this, so let's say we don't wanna have an extra variable here, we could come down here and check 15 first. So we say, if we're divisible by 15, then print out fizzbuzz. Then we put our else back in here and we check the five case, move our printed, and then if I mod three equals zero, for now fizz, and then else, and we'll just remove this last print statement. So this is another way that you could solve it. Basically what we're doing is checking the both case first, and then if that's not the case, then we check each of the other cases separately. So just another option, again, pretty straightforward. Or another approach, let's say we take this, let's make yet another version, fizzbuzz4, and let's say that we, ah, you know, I'm not crazy about this. I'd really like to not have a both case like this. So let's come back up here where we, we check the five case and we check the three case. Let's switch the order because we want fizz to show up first. We want to be able to get a fizz buzz if it's both. Okay, so this will handle that. But now what I'm gonna do is just instead, I'm going to add a little bit of complexity to the else clause, right? The, the case where it's neither. And basically what we'll do here is do, we'll check for three and check to make sure it's not equal to zero. And then we will, check for five, make sure that's not equal to zero. So this option then keeps these first, the first initial logic really simple and it just adds some complexity down here to the case where we just wanna print out the number. So, so far these are just different variants on the same idea. Now there's somebody out there I know who's gonna to wanna to get a little bit fancy. So let's take a look at, at some other alternatives if you just are trying to have fun with it. For our fifth version, let's see, maybe uh, let's, let's, yeah, let's do a lookup table maybe. So what we could do is we could say, let's make an array, fizzbuzz LUT, I think is what I'll call it. If you haven't seen lookup tables, do check out my video on them. But basically what I'm going to do here is just make a bunch of different outputs. I'm gonna iterate through the different possible outputs that I could get. So if it's, if we mod by 15, um, you're gonna get fizzbuzz. And, and really why this works, in case anyone's confused, why this works is that uh, this whole fizzbuzz problem is actually repeating, it's cyclical. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna basically, you know, this is gonna become the format string for my printf, but basically I know that the output is going to rotate it's gonna rotate starting at one right here and it's just gonna circularly go through here so I can just make an array that has all these outputs and that's going to work just fine. So um, let's just quickly fill this out. We get buzz here, fizz here. Forgot my quotes. Now I'm going pretty fast so I'm probably gonna make a mistake here. We'll find it eventually. Okay, so this should do the trick. We have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We don't actually need this last one because mod 15 will never be 15. But then once we have this handy little lookup table, then basically I can come down here and things are gonna get really simple. Basically I can come down here and we will just add a print F up here. And the format string is going to be my fizzbuzz LUT with i mod 15. So that's gonna just take whichever one of those strings up above happens to match i modulus 15. And then we will just add i in here. Sometimes we'll use it in the fizz buzz and fizz buzz cases we will not. Now let's just come down here and make sure that this actually works. So fizz buzz five and we'll just run it. And you can see sure enough, we are back where we were. So great. 
You know, and this one is kind of flirting with the whole fancy code thing, um, but it's not that crazy. It might take someone a little bit of time to figure out what exactly you're doing, but at some level, it feels like we're just trading complexity a little bit. We're, I mean, you know, because our FizzBuzz 5 function actually is much simpler, but you sort of have to understand how the LUT's working and, and what its function is in order to make sense of what we're actually doing. And then finally, And then finally, you might see something that looks like this, where we've added a few extra counters up here and we're basically just using the cyclical nature here of the problem. Basically, C3, I'm counting up 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, using the modulus operator. And for five, I'm doing the same thing, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. This is helping me keep track of basically the logic of what's divisible by what. And no, I don't recommend doing this to a for loop. I mean, yes, for loops can do this, but we're kind of torturing them here just a little bit. If this were code that I was going to hand off to a coworker, I wouldn't be doing this, but it's kind of fun to play around with and just to show you an alternative. And the point is, is that with all of this logic up here with these extra counters, then really all I have to do is come down here and this case, I'm checking to see if both of these are non-zero. That means we're just going to print out the number and otherwise we're going to come down here and basically we're going to print out two strings. And then we use the ternary operator in here to say, let's see if C3 is non-zero, meaning that the number is not divisible by three, then we just print out the empty string. So don't print out anything. Otherwise print out fizz and do the same thing with five, only this time printing out buzz. Now, like I said, this is really messy, kind of fun, but if I were interviewing someone and they wrote this one right out of their head, I don't know, I might still hire them, but I might have some follow-up questions to make sure that nothing like this ever happened in production. I just wanna make sure that this was an ironic rather than serious, this is what we should do sort of thing. So anyway, here we have a bunch of different options, a bunch of different solutions. They're all different. And I've heard people talk about how you can try to figure out something about what kind of programmer someone is, depending on how they come up with an implementation for FizzBuzz, I'm personally not convinced this is a good idea. But I do think it's a reasonable litmus test just to see if someone has bare minimum passable programming abilities. They sort of know what they're doing. And so it's not a bad idea for you to, you know, at least be familiar with this problem because someone might actually use this to test you. But what I don't want you to do is just go memorize one of these and then regurgitate it because that would defeat the whole point. If you do that, the test becomes meaningless. And of course, even if you did manage to get a job that way, it wouldn't take them very long to figure out after the fact that your skills basically end at FizzBuzz. And that's gonna be really depressing for you and for them. Anyway, I hope this is interesting and maybe even helpful for some of you in your future code interviews. And until next week, I will see you later.